Mike Zeno Ministries presents Called to Victory. Now here are your hosts, the senior pastors of Glory and Peace Church International, pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. If I had to ask you about a popular or very familiar story in the Old Testament, which one will you tell me? Tell me a story. Just give me a name. Look at that. David and Goliath. First strike. That's what I want to talk to you about today. The challenge of life is mounted against people that know that there's a reason for them. Unfortunately, that challenge is won by the enemy when people do not understand that God has graced them with the ability to take a hold of their circumstance and put a halt to it. God does a lot of things, but he does it a great deal of the time through people. The Bible tells us in the beginning of Samuel, 1 Samuel 17, that the Philistines gathered themselves together and their armies were gathered together at a place called Shoka. I've preached about this quite a few times. The word shoka means hedge, which belonged to Judah. Judah is the word for praise. And peace between shoka, which means hedge, and azekah, which means dug over, in ephesdamin. Ephesdamin means the boundary of blood. Now, I don't, that, that verse alone, I can preach on for the next two weeks. Because what we do know is this, that the enemy came and pitched himself at Shoka, which is a hedge. Job talks about the hedge of protection that, that the devil saw and said, I can't touch Job because you've got a hedge around him. Every one of us has a hedge of protection. It's a shield, a force field that God puts around you. But the enemy, the Bible says, came to that place of Shoka, which is hedge, which belonged to praise, praise, and Azekah. Azekah means dog over. This is the place where God buries and hides all of your sins, but the enemy is very willing to go dig it up or encourages you to dig up your past so that when you dig it up, you don't have a protection because your protection is in Ephesdamin, which is the boundary of blood. Are you with me? So you've got to be established in the righteousness of God. The Spirit of God comes to convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Amen? Comes to convict of sin to show you that you're a sinner. So you can repent. And then convince you of righteousness, which means now that you have repented and you are forgiven, you have a right standing in God. Not based on, I did this or did that, but you're just called righteous. The gift of righteousness is given to you. It's a gift. It's not a doing. It's a gift. Now that gift causes you to begin to act righteously. Are you with me? And of judgment. Because of judgment, you're saying, devil, you have no right over my life anymore. 
Is somebody listening? Yes. Devil, you have no right. I know who I am. I am forgiven. I am redeemed. I am chosen of God. And I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen. Amen? So, when you come to God, you've got to come to that place where you are hedged in with this force field that is generated by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. But where does the enemy come? He says, now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shoko, which is the hedge. The enemy will always come to accuse you. The enemy will always come to condemn you. The enemy will always come to tell you about the 10 reasons why you will never be successful, why you will never make it in life, why you will never be married, why you will never have children, why you will never be, uh, uh, make any money, why you will always be poor, why you will always be broke, why you will always be sick, why you will always be whatever. But it's all a lie. You remind yourself about what Jesus Christ has already done. Yes. He says that you are righteous and that you are holy like God is. Amen. For he says, be ye holy. When God said, light be, what happened? Let there be what? Light. And light was. Yes. Be ye what? Holy. Then you should be what? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You must see yourself righteous and holy to act righteous and act holy. You must receive the word of God. Now the Bible tells us that these were the places where the people of God, uh, or rather the Philistines came, after the people of God. And, and it says, And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah. Wow. Elah means, it's, it's a word for uh, a tree, a terebinth tree. And this tree had a particular um, chemical, um, what do you say, um, so it's raisin, and, and it, it tarnishes stuff. So if you put it on, on, on any shiny thing, it will cause it to tarnish. Are you with me? Okay. Where do the people of God go hang around? At Elah. The place where their glory is being tarnished. Wrong position. Say with me, in 2019... I will position myself rightly. If you position yourself in the wrong place, you will get the wrong results. You've got to position yourself righteously based on the word of God. It says that the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side and there was a valley between them and there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath. What does the word Goliath mean? The word Goliath means naked and ashamed. Amen. Are you with me? That's what Goliath means. Naked and what? Hashem, what does that remind you of? What happened in the Garden of Eden? The devil's a liar. Say, I shall not be harassed by the spirit of being naked and ashamed. I am not a sinner. I am a saint. Birthed by God. I am born again of the spirit of God. I am an overcomer. I am the manifestation of the faith of God. Hallelujah. Don't position yourself in the wrong place. Goliath comes. Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits 
and his span. And the Bible goes on and talks about Goliath and how he positioned himself, uh, what he was doing, and uh, how he terrorized the saints. The Bible tells us that he did this in verse 16, 1 Samuel 17, 16. He says he did it for 40 days. Wow. Someone say 40. He did it for how long? 40 days. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. 40 days. 40 days of terrorizing the people of God. Causing them to doubt themselves. 40 days. 40 is a very interesting number because we know that the Lord Jesus Christ fasted for how long? For 40 days. Fasted for 40 days. We know that the children of Israel went around and around for how long? 40 years. It's a time of trial. 40. But after 40, there is 40 what? 41. It's a new start. 40 is 8 times what? 8 times what? 5. 5 is the number of what? 8 is the number of what? And so what do you think 40 is all about? It's about the devil trying to contradict the word of God. That you do not have new beginnings and that you do not have the grace to succeed in life. Are you with me? But the devil's a liar. Because new beginnings I have. <laughs> and every time I'll be stronger than I was before. Hallelujah. 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 Caleb said, I'm stronger now. Hallelujah. I am stronger now than I was 40 years ago. Give me what? This mountain. Goliath was in a mountain. Any mountain that stands before you must come down now. He's there, mounting off, telling the people of God that they should bring their champion and that he's going to be the champion for the other side. And whichever, which, which one wins, the other has to serve. Goliath focused his attention on his six cubits and his span. Six is the number of man. And his span. Whatever it is that he can grab. It's mount enough. And when he, whenever he showed up for that 40 days, the children of Israel took off. Every time Goliath comes and starts talking, they start running. He was occupying their space. And said, if I defeat your champion, then all of you have to serve us. We don't all have to die in this battle. Why do we all have to die? Just bring your champion. If I win, and I know I will win, you serve us. Why is he that bold? He's that big. Just like the problems that try to challenge you in your life. They're that big. But whatever it is that is big, standing in your path, shall be made small. 
shall be reduced to nothing. In the mighty name of Jesus, that which is challenging you now shall stop. Somebody say, I shall live and not die and testify of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. In verse 9, if he be able to fight at me and, and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall you be our servants and what? Serve us. Huh. He, 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 he was simply saying, listen, we might be your servants, but we're not about to serve. But if we defeat you, you be our servant and you serve. <laughs> the devil's a liar. Oh, well, you're going to see what David is going to do very soon. So, David has come to serve his brothers. He is hidden from view. Nobody knows him. Nobody thinks about him being anything. And he comes and he sees the children of Israel running away. And he says, uh, what's going on here? What's happening? And they began to tell him about what the king promised. It says in verse 23, And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and were so afraid. But David is there listening to this. He heard what the guy said. These other guys are running just by seeing him. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? <laughs> Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who kill at him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Tax free. And David spoke to the man that stood by him saying, what shall be done? Notice, he was not concentrating on what Goliath was talking about. He says, tell me, what, tell me again, what, what did you say the king is going to give? I'm going to be rich. I'm going to marry his daughter. And my family is going to be tax-free. We won't be taxed. Wow. He goes and he asks another person, and another person, and another person. He was getting the confirmation repeated in his hearing, and he's shutting off everything that he's heard from the enemy. He's reminding himself of the good things that are about to explode inside his family. And not the fear that the enemy is pronouncing over him and the people of Israel. Hallelujah. He said, and David spoke to the man that stood by him saying, What shall be done to the man that killed the Philistine and take it away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this guy? He has no covenant. I have a covenant. And this man is mounting off. He doesn't have God. I have God. He doesn't have a promise. I have the promise. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of what? The living God. What did the people of Israel say? They said, with their mouth, 
all the men of Israel said, Have you seen the man that has come up surely to defy who? Israel. David said, no, 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 no. They didn't come. He, he's not coming here to defy us. He's coming to defy our God. You've got to take yourself out of the equation and make it a God issue. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Please hear. Anything in your life that's happened, you've got to remove yourself from it and make it a God issue. Like, God, what will people say? If I don't pay my bills. Hello? Is somebody listening? God, what will people say if I die with cancer? What will people say if my plane crashes? What will people say? God, this is your battle. The battle is the Lord. Is somebody listening? The battle is what? The Lord. So this story that we've been repeating for 40 days, we've got to stop it now. Because we are not people that run away. We are people that cut down whatever it is that is seeking to contradict your will in our lives. That's who I am. Hallelujah. As long as you make it your issue, you are limited in your capacity to address the issue. Because it's all about your face, not God's face. Moses, Moses said, God, what will people say? They're going to say, if you, if, you, if you allow this thing to happen, they're going to say that you, God, were not able to take your people all the way from Egypt into the promised land. So you cannot kill anybody here. And it repented the Lord. God says, I repent. I'm not going to kill them. I'm going to take them into the promised land. God, this is your issue. And even when God says, Moses, the people that you brought out of Egypt, <laughs> God wanted to just shove the issue onto Moses' lap. And Moses said, I don't know. We're not having that discussion. It's not me that has the rod. It is, this is your rod. You are the one who planned this, and you have to finish it. The God who started a good work in you and started a good work in me shall complete it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. We are not going to be in the same state as we were. My story must change. Somebody shout hallelujah. Are you listening? So it was. David says, this man is defying the armies of the living God. And the people answered him after this man saying, so shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And of course there is somebody always there to challenge you from within. Sometimes your, your problem is family based. The eldest brother Eliab comes to him and says, you I know your arrogance. I hear that you're busy asking people all kinds of questions around here. And by the way, where, why aren't you taking care of your responsibility? Our father has some little sheep over there, and you left it and came here. And you're busy asking all kinds of silly questions. Well, the Bible says, David said, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Is there not a reason? Sure, I came here to bring you guys food. But you were here, older brother, while that man is busy mouthing off. I'm going to take care of business. So the message gets to Saul. Watch this. David had just left Oh, Saul had just left David. Saul had just left David to go to this battle. Because 
Saul is busy acting crazy. And David will be playing his um, harp, his banjo, his guitar, whatever it is you want to call it. And Saul pipes down. But you're going to find out that when he comes before Saul, Saul says, Who's, whose son is this? Who's this guy? And you say, wait a minute. How doesn't he know who it is? I'll tell you why. Because a crazy king, his advisors don't want Saul or David to be staring at at the king acting crazy. So he is behind the curtain. You, you with me? He's behind the curtain playing his music. And it suits him. So he never had seen this guy. Are you with me so far? He's talking to him behind the curtain. David is being used of God. And he's not known are you with me? But there's going to be a day of the unveiling. You've been used. But nobody knows you. You're not recognized. But there comes the day that you will be recognized next time on Called to Victory. My name is Victory. Victor. Overcomer. Prevailer. <laughs> What's your name? To receive a CD of today's program, send $10 to Mike Zeno Ministries. Post Office Box 3990. Winnipeg, Manitoba. R2W5H9. To order by Visa or MasterCard, call 204-582-6795. Request the program number on your screen. Thank you for watching Call to Victory with your hosts, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. This is a viewer-supported program. Thank you for your financial gifts. Call, write, or follow us online. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or watch us on our YouTube channel. This has been a Mike Zeno Ministries presentation.